to the Daily Horror Habit Podcast. I'm your host, Jay Krieger, bringing you daily reviews of currently streaming horror movies for your twisted pleasure. Be aware that these reviews may include mild spoilers. And as always, I hope you enjoy. War and zombie films are similar in that while consistently producing fantastic films every year, you'd be hard-pressed to argue that they aren't two of the most oversaturated genres out there. Rather than choosing one over the other, director Julius Avery and the production company Bad Robot have blended these genres together, raising a new type of World War II horror film that Avery describes as Indiana Jones on acid. Released in 2018, the Nazi zombie mayhem of Overlord is currently streaming on Amazon Prime and Hulu. American paratroopers are tasked with dropping behind enemy lines to disable a radio tower, allowing the D-Day invasion to commence, though this quickly unravels as they uncover a Nazi plot to raise an army of undead soldiers. First and foremost, what I love about Overlord is its pacing. The film begins very distinctly as a traditional war film that establishes its setting and draws the viewer into a world they're more or less familiar with. Characters and their motives are established, which allows the film to carry a weight that most zombie films honestly lack. The film opens with one of the most impressive and breathtaking openings to any war film in recent memory. As the troops are preparing to jump, their dropship takes heavy fire, bullets shred soldiers where they stand, the interior explodes in blood, and the plane's tail is engulfed in flames. And the most remarkable thing about this scene is that it was mostly achieved using practical effects. The team built a real plane hull and attached it to a gimbal machine to recreate the plane banking from left to right. They also used blood squibs for soldier deaths, which caked the setting and actors alike in gallons of blood. And in the most remarkable feat, they used real flames for the tail section and had stunt people fall through it. It's an incredibly tense and action-packed scene that highlights the horror of war along the lines of classic World War II films, such as Saving Private Ryan and more recently, Fury. As the paratroopers make their way to the ground, things go awry quickly, as only a handful of soldiers make their LZ and now must contend with a large Nazi force that's occupied a nearby village. The decision to play the first half of the film as a straight war epic is equally important in establishing the American squad. Each character is quickly defined by their personality traits and gives an added emotional investment past the standard Soldier 1, Soldier 2. Getting to know Wyatt Russell's mysterious Corporal Ford, Joe Von Adepo's good-natured but determined voice, and John Margot's big mouth sniper Lyle, accompanied by the terrific Chloe, a fiery French native whose disdain for the Nazi occupiers aligns with the Americans in their mission. And getting to know these characters, we're given a reason to root for them and their mission. Now, for a Nazi zombie film, the horror elements don't actually occur for about half of the runtime. And while some of my friends have cried foul at this, I really think the film's subtle blending and pacing of its two genre influences is important. The supernatural element's slow introduction is imperative in not only the tone of the film, but making the horror elements pop as well as they do. We see the horrors and atrocities that the Nazis commit firsthand, they're real and undeniable, but then introducing gruesomely contorting and disfigured zombies adds a new layer of fear, a new layer of intensity, and a new layer of bloody fun. There are small instances of horror early on. The paratroopers come across strange remains in the woods, There's Chloe's sick and very clearly infected grandmother. And then Boyce discovers the Nazi's secret underground laboratory. He sees firsthand the Nazis' experiments have resulted in bringing the dead back to life, illustrated for us as he uncovers a severed head that still begs him for help. Rather than go the traditional route of flesh-rotting zombies, we see zombies that still resemble humans, but have grotesque afflictions making clear these are bioengineered weapons, which falls in line with the Nazis' historical fascination with experimentation. For example, later in the film when Chloe's being chased by a one-eyed zombie, his other missing arm is replaced with a piece of protruding bone that he tries to impale her with. It also helps that there are running zombies, which are always terrifying. But the most terrifying segment in the film is where Boyce reanimates Chase, who died from a gunshot wound, only to see him go from feeling fine to him becoming enraged and displaying supersuman strength moments before his neck snaps back and additional bones protrude from his throat. Yet another instance of the film taking a practical approach, using puppetry and animatronics to create this truly disturbing scene that's made all the more memorable for it. But by far, my favorite zombie is none other than the film's central antagonist, SS Officer Waffner, played by Game of Thrones' Euron Greyjoy, who volunteers as the first live test subject of the Nazis' experiments. Boasting a gaping hole in his face, compliments of Corporal Ford shooting him, this horrific wound required a good five hours of makeup application a day. Though while time-consuming, was efficient in making Waffner the embodiment of pure evil. Overlord's seamless blending in and out of genres is important both narratively, but also in terms of its action. The film's grounded shootouts between paratroopers and Nazis are stellar, fully capitalizing on its R rating, accompanied by some of the best sound design of any war film possibly ever. Machine guns roar while the crack of Lyle's sniper rifle is deafening. 
Bodies don't just drop, they explode into a bloody mist. And even here, we're given distinctly different styles of fight scenes. While the grounded war scenes are just that, the scenes involving Nazi zombies are the more over-the-top but fitting for the up-close terror that often accompanies them. Whether it's Chloe emptying a Luger into a zombie's head, or barbecuing it with a flamethrower, the over-the-top zombie kills are a nice contrast to the tense and core-shaking war shootouts. Do I think the film could have been shorter? Sure. Could it have used a few more Nazi zombies? Definitely. But in spite of these two minor qualms, Overlord doesn't get nearly enough credit for being the biting genre cocktail that it is. The film delivers such a succinct blending of genres that it shouldn't, but absolutely does work. So, if you're in need of a refreshing zombie film with stellar shootouts and effects work, check out Overlord, which is currently streaming on Amazon Prime and Hulu. And that'll do it for another episode of Daily Horror Habit. I'll see you guys soon for another horror movie review. Thanks for listening to another episode of the Daily Horror Habit podcast. If you enjoyed this episode, please subscribe to Daily Horror Habit on your preferred streaming service. And follow at Daily Horror Habit on Instagram or at Daily Horror Pod on Twitter.